and welcome back for another Music Theory Bite. In this video, I'm going to show you how to identify basic atonal trichords, three note sets. If that sounds like something you'd like to learn more about, then this is the video for you. So why do we care about atonal trichords? Well, quite frankly, it's an easy way for us to get into understanding and working with the language of atonal music. We can take any three unique pitches, group them into what we call a set, and then based on how we do certain manipulations of those, we would figure out that any combination of three unique pitches will be one of these 12 atonal trichords. Now there's nothing magical about trichords. That is, they aren't used more frequently than other types of sets. In fact, one might even argue that four note sets, tetrachords, five note sets, pentachords, six note sets, hexachords are used more frequently than trichords. So why bother to learn them? Well, I have my students learn them because, first of all, if you can figure out the manipulations that you can do with trichords, it's just a matter of scaling them up to be able to do them with larger sets. So it's an easy way to get into learning how to figure out how atonal music is put together. Secondly, atonal trichords, there's only 12 of them. Tetrachords, there's a whole bunch more. Pentachords, even more than that. Hexachords, even more than that. So with only 12 trichords, it becomes fairly easy to memorize a smaller group of things, which you can then play around with, sort of like playing in the sandbox to figure out how atonal music goes together. What you see in front of you right now is the entire system of the 12 atonal trichords. That is, if we were to take any three unique pitches, group them together into what we call a set, then it would be one of these 12 sets, one of these 12 trichords. It's handy to memorize it, and one of the things that you can do to memorize it a little bit more easily is to memorize the organization of this chart. Now I'm going to talk about atonal sets and trichords and atonal music theory in a different video, but for now this should be enough to get you started in figuring out how all of this works. So what you'll see are a bunch of numbers on this. First of all, down in the lower right hand corner you're going to see the atonal intervals. We're going to use those rather than the traditional intervals. So a minor second is a one because there's a half step between the two pitches. A major sixth is a nine because there are nine semitones between the two pitches of a major sixth. So we have to be thinking about this in terms of atonal interval sizes. Now first you're going to see at the top of each box a number that starts with three dash something. And that's what we call the Fort number. Those are named after music theorist Alan Fort, who was one of the pioneers in organizing um, musical set theory, that is applying mathematical set theory to musical structures. And what he did was he took all possible combinations of pitches, trichords, tetrachords, pentachords, hexachords, and so on, and he organized them in charts from the most compact to least compact. So the first number of each of those fort numbers tells how many elements are in the set. 3-1 means there are three elements in the set, and the number 1 means it is the most compact statement of any three pitches. So you'll notice that we have a half step and a half step, and the combination of those two half steps forms a whole step. We can't get any smaller or any more compact than that. You notice that 3 2 is a half step and a whole step, creating a minor third from the first pitch to the last pitch. And that's just slightly wider, a half step wider than our 3 1. And we could do that and check out all of these things going all the way up to 3 12, which is our least compact trichord. Underneath the fort number, you're, you see a number in parentheses, and that's what we call the prime form. That is the most compact statement of the trichord starting on zero. Underneath that, you see another uh, set of numbers in brackets, and they start on zero, end on the same number as the other, as the prime form in the same box, but you'll notice the interior number is different. That's what I call the prime inverted form. Other people have different names for it, but basically what that is, is the most compact statement of the set where we take the interior interval and we move it instead of being above the lower pitch of the trichord, it's going to be below the upper pitch of the trichord. And I'll explain that more in a different video on doing trichordal inversion, but for right now it's just enough to memorize these. So you notice that set 3-3 three, three is a 0-1-4 in its prime form. We have a half step followed by a minor third. If we were to take the half step and move it from being above the bottom pitch of the boundary pitches 
to below the top pitch of the boundary pitches. We still have the exact same intervals. We have a minor third and a half step combined together creating a major third. But now that, mi that minor second, the half step, occurs below the top pitch of the set. That's going to be useful because sets can show up in either its prime form or its inverted form. So we're going to need to know that. So you'll want to memorize this. And there are a couple of things that you can do to memorize this. One is, first of all, just memorize the numbers. Two is take a look at the organization of the chart. Along the top, we have four boxes that are what we would say non-invertible. That is, if you were to take it and move the interior pitch from being above the bottom pitch to the lower below the upper pitch, you would end up with the exact same set. Furthermore, you're going to notice that all of the boxes in the first column start with a 0, 1 for the prime form and end with a half step for the in prime inverted form. All the ones in the second column begin with a 0, 2. All the ones in the third column begin with a 0, 3. And the lone set in the fourth column begins with a 0, 4. So start by memorizing this chart, memorizing the fort numbers, the prime forms, and the prime inverted forms, and that will be very useful for when you actually start having to identify trichords. So let's actually get down to business. If you were to hear a trichord, what are the steps that you would take in order to identify what it is? That is, be able to tell your teacher what fort number it is or what prime form it is. So let's start with a trichord. We'll start with this one. So the very first thing I would do is draw a map or a chart of the shape of the trichord, the pitches that I heard. And so you see here that I have drawn my three dots, my lowest pitch, followed by my highest pitch, followed by the middle pitch. Might be useful just to uh, think in for just a second here about what are the possibilities of these trichordal chordal shapes. If you think about it, if you have any three unique pitches, there's only six ways to present them melodically and then one way to present it harmonically. And those are now showing up on your screen. Those are the six orderings, six melodic orderings of a three note set or a trichord followed by the harmonic ordering. So we're gonna start by figuring out which ordering it is because that will help us figure out what the trichord is. Once we've done that, then we can assume at least when we first start out, I always have my students identify these in close position first before I start expanding them out. So we're going to be just be dealing with close position for right now. So I can assume that the lowest pitch, whichever one it is, happens to be my zero. After that, then, I need to identify the intervals that go into the set. And I'm going to start by listening for the interval that I hear most clearly. I tend to hear the smaller intervals a little bit more clearly. Now I have three intervals that I can choose from. I can go from the first pitch to the second pitch, the second pitch to the third pitch, or I could even hear the first pitch to the third pitch. And it's important not to ignore that possibility. Sometimes that is the key to doing this in the most easy way possible. So since I said I like hearing the smaller intervals first, I'll notice that the second pitch to the third pitch in this case was a whole step down or a minus two. So I go ahead and write that on my chart so I can identify what, uh, what the other pitches will be. If I find one other interval in the set I will know what the entire set is. At least I can figure it out. I tend to hear some of the more active intervals a little bit more easily. So in this case, I heard the first pitch to the second pitch as being a plus six. That is a tritone up. Now with that, I can do a little simple math. My bottom pitch is zero. My top pitch has to be a six because that was a plus six. And then my middle pitch, the last pitch, has to be a 4 because I know that's a, a whole step down. 6 minus 2 equals 4. I now know the pitches that go into it. And now I go back to my chart of trichords, which I have memorized, and I figure out which one it is. This is a 3-8 trichord, 0-4-6. But I'm not done yet because I notice that this one is its inverted form. So I'm going to mark that by putting an I after the fourth number. So I have trichord 3-8-I. And that's really all there is to it. The next step is to just practice a lot of this. Now, if you're having troubles, experience has taught me from teaching this over many years, that most of the time, if a student is having trouble with the, the skill, it's due to two reasons. The first is they're not good enough at identifying individual intervals. So you really need to spend some time 
continuing to practice recognition of individual intervals. I recommend playing three note sets and recognizing identifying the interval between the first pitch and the second pitch, the second pitch to the third pitch, and that all important and often forgotten first pitch to third pitch. All three of those things will help you. So let's recap. First of all, you need to know the theory. You need to understand how the trichords are organized so that you can, once you get the information that you need to identify it, you know what to do with it. So memorize that chart of trichords. Second, listen to the trichord and draw its shape. In the case of these trichords that are all in closed position, find the lowest pitch, that's your zero. Find the, pit, the interval that you hear most clearly and mark that, and then find one other interval and then once you have those two things marked, you can figure out the rest of the trichord by simply doing a little bit of math. Once you have all the numbers figured out, then match up those numbers with your chart of trichords. And then you have the fourth number, and then you have your answer. Well, that does it for this video. If you found it helpful, please make sure you like it. Feel free to leave constructive comments below. And as always, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel for the latest Music Theory Bites as they become available. Until next time.